has any last minute urges to come join us, please come over and sign up. But otherwise, this is our final author, the worst of the worst first page. <laughs> Let's hope. Mike Byrne, everybody! Yeah. Hello, everyone. I, I feel this, this demands some explanation. Uh, Sunny, who you heard first, is my wife, and on the Joko cruise last year, uh, after the worst first chapter, we were inspired to write our own. This is why they begin with the same sentence. Uh, this was our prompt. So, Johnny Harddrive was a really good hacker. He could use programming to get into any computer in the world. Even the CIA's mainframe was like playing Uno to him, and the FBI was like Go Fish. Last year, he'd even managed to hack deep into the cloud, getting his HTML into its algorithms, which was like a pogo stick. <laughs> his bright blue eyes would dart across his Dell 27-inch 4K USB-C ultra-sharp monitor with astounding speed, his heart pounding as he would destroy one firewall after another, ripping them apart like an alpaca with a box of cornflakes. <laughs> his skillful hands danced across his Dell Premier multi-device wireless keyboard like Jesse Graff on Season 8 of American Ninja Warrior, tackling obstacle after obstacle with a grace that only an alumnus of Harvard School of Computer Hacking could manage. <laughs> it was these hands that Anita Feynman was thinking of while lying across the back seats of her, cold, of her Ford Camry on a cold November night. Now I've had to edit out the next bit for decency reasons. <laughs> Just imagine there's a paragraph there and you feel a bit dirty. <laughs> she lay there for a few moments feeling both satisfied and disgusted with herself. After all, what would her husband think? When she'd married Herb Mills, he was the best thing that had ever happened to her. He was the most honest and communicative man she'd ever met, but as soon as she'd joined the military, he'd become oddly closed off and private. Despite his muscular body, he rose up the ranks and she began to lose interest in, in him sexually, finding herself looking for more than just a corporeal connection. While their intimate activities had once been thrilling, they were turning into a major disappointment. So when a friend casually mentioned he'd changed, Anita denied it, but he knew there was a kernel of truth. It was clear. General Mills' rock-solid six-pack and throbbing arms were no longer of interest to her. She wanted someone with brains. So when she'd met Johnny Harddrive at an underground hacking event, she'd immediately known she wanted him. Suddenly, Anita was disturbed from her activities by red and blue flashing lights as a police car pulled up beside her. She glanced over and a policeman looked back at her with a friendly smile. He was short and plump with a face like a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> He had a scar across both his cheeks, and a scar on his face, too. He stood up as sitting was hurting his scar, and walked over to Anita's window. Anita Feynman, he asked, his bright blue eyes barely visible behind his smile. She was surprised, like when you're making toast, and you forget the toast is on, and the toast pops up while you're looking away. How do you know her name? The next few hours were an indescribable whirlwind of interesting and exciting activity. But as it was indescribable, I can't say any more. <laughs> Suffice to say that at the end, Anita, find, uh, Anita, sat, uh, Anita find herself sitting in the co-pilot seat of a fighter jet, hurtling across the hot Denver sky at Mach 100, her entire body being constantly shaken by the force of the aircraft, making her chest look like two panna cottas on an unbalanced washing machine. <laughs> sitting beside her in the pilot's seat was Johnny Harddrive. He had a firm, masculine grasp on the control stick, manipulating it with the skill of an expert despite having never flown before. <laughs> as soon as he climbed in, all of the cockpit's instruments and dials had just made sense to him. He'd set the QNH on the altimeter, switched on the magnetos, primed and started the engine, and after a short trip down the taxiway, he engaged full throttle and took off into the night sky. To him, it was like a hula hoop. Anita was watching Johnny lustfully as he expertly flew the aircraft up and down, side to side, and occasionally making little circular motions as he gazed masculinely out the cockpit window with a look of intense con concentration on his face. What are you thinking about? Anita inquired inquisitively. Johnny paused. He had been wondering if he should purchase a new Dell Inspiron 2-in-1 PC or if he should really splash out and get a Dell XPS 17 with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 graphics card with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a 17-inch UHD 500-nit Dell Infinity display. 
<laughs> when he saw the way Anita was looking at him, he knew it wasn't the time to share his feelings on Dell's excellent range of laptops, desktops, and accessories suitable for home or business. Do you want to try? He asked, glancing down at the long heaving stick between his legs. Anita gingerly reached over, her hand timidly hovering above it. But I've never flown before, she admitted virginly. That's okay, said Johnny Hardrive as he sensually grabbed her hand and placed it in a firm grasp around his control stick. Neither have I. Sunny Lie, Doug Rowland, Sarah Gibson, and Mike Berman. If you had a good time, if you were inspired, please write. Somebody will do this next year, I hope. Maybe it'll be me. I don't know. I don't want to do this, but somebody will. So go write your stories. Go write. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here and to our authors. Woo!